Lewis Pucci Van Poche are going to be the UK's favourite journeyman. Subscribe to Sport and Icons. <laughs>
and stuff. They do a little bit of that, but it's not. It's all. It's mainly just a fitness gym, and then we was kind of boxers as well. So coming out of the amateurs, I was never like the most polished boxer. I always loved love Ricky Hatton. I used to love the way he moves there and get inside and whip the body shots in. So that's what I used to do as an amateur. I used to get at the wrong end of some scorecards because of the body shots weren't were never scored because it was to computer scoring back then. Right. Um, nowadays it's the ten point must system. Uh, so I might, I might have done a bit better as an amateur back uh, nowadays. But um, yeah, so I, if I in answer to your question, I don't really have a a number I can put on it, but I, I definitely could have won a lot more if I wanted to. Um, I played the game for so long, and also, like you, you know, and most people that know me know that, that I live, I live a normal lifestyle. I, I've been a professional athlete, um, concurrently whilst living my twenties like a normal twenty, twenty something year old. Um, so, you, so it's been, I've, I've drink beer, I eat fast food, and I box on the weekend. Like it's uh, concurrently, but whilst other people take it a bit more seriously, I, I I never, I was never that way inclined. I liked socializing and stuff. So, um, so yeah, it's hard to say if I was on top form for every single fight, but a lot more fights. But it should have, would have, could have now, wouldn't it? And who cares? That is very true, very true. Now you you've always been known as being very, very eccentric, especially with like your ring walks and everything. So, like I don't think I've ever seen you miserable. Even no. after a fight, even uh, you know your face is swollen up in that time, you you were always happy. Yeah, I've, I've always had that persona, like I'm a happy-go-lucky chap. Obviously, I have my days and stuff where I'm not in a good mood, but that's that's seldom do you see them. Um, yeah, but like like I I made a, a lot of boxers. They're very tunnel vision. They're in the ring. They, they walk to the ring without interacting to the crowd. They wear they wear a robe or a t-shirt and it's all the same it's all the same everyone does it the same thing um they ring walk to the like song that they like or a song which means something to them which is it's all not, not knocking any of this by the way but um but it's all the same so i i just found myself a little niche and i made a name for myself by being eccentric like you said like theming ring walks i did used to do the queensby rules pose <laughs> had the the, the, the swirly tash and I found a niche doing that. And I, I realised that boxing is show business with blood. It is entertainment. So so if, uh, uh, I, I just put a little, my own little spin on it. And also, being the away fighter, not, no one's there to see me fight. Not a single person have I sold the ticket to. I'm the opponent. So 9 out of 10, the journeyman, the away fighter gets in, gets in the ring, they do the fight, they get out. No one remembers them. No, no one leaves that venue saying, "Oh, what about that uh, that lad in the away corner in the fight three? No one, no one does that. So when I started theming the ring walks, doing catchy, catchy songs which people know and like, just like floor filler songs and stuff like that, which like you people play at weddings. <laughs> but like um, those sort of songs, um, the catchy song, I'd like ring walk, I dance to the ring, or um, I'm dressed up in a fancy dress. People will then remember me because I say, Do you "Remember that lad that dressed up as the the surfer and only falls and horses and stuff like that." So, so yeah, it's, um, I've left my own mark on the sport that way rather than what what my record says or what I've achieved. And one of my favourite ones was the football, and uh, you're quite handy with that football, aren't you? Yeah, but I played at a decent level when I was younger. Um, I'm probably bang average at football these days, but. Uh, yeah, I played quite a decent level of football. I've done a, every sport I've, t- I've done to some level over my life. So, yeah, that, that was a good ring ball. I got told off for kicking the ball into the crowd on that one, though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think you did. I think you did. <laughs> now, of all the opponents that uh, you fought, which ones stand out the most to you to say, I'm glad I should um, Yeah, so there's a few, really. There's, there's, there's probably top four. Um... Top four, I'd say you're uh, five, maybe. So I've got um, Lerone Richards, because Zach Parker, you've got Callum Simpson, you've got Sam Eggington, and you've got uh, Curtis Woodhouse. Curtis Woodhouse was like a big milestone for me. That was the make or break for me. That was the, um, I got an opportunity to fight on Sky Sports, late notice, um, against guys who just fought for a Commonwealth title and is on the track to a British title. 
Um, so I saw that as like an opportunity and that was the make or break. That was the turning point because I had a few fights in the away corner up to that point and got on the wrong end of the decision but and won one or two. Um, so I was like, right, I can make a name for myself here. If I put up a good, even if I put up a good fight, my stock will rise and I might get opportunities to come off that and uh, put up a good fight, lost the fight. So that's when the, I was kicked into just being a, a road warrior then. Um, uh, did, didn't did, sort of lost a bit of ambition a little bit, but I also realised how the sport works and just and just started doing it that way. Um, and then you got like Lerone Richards going to win a world title. Um, uh, Zach Parker was in line to fight Canelo. Uh, you got. And then Callum Simpson, he's he's been he's like an unearthed gem. He is. Um he's uh I think he's just been snapped up by a broadcaster. Um but uh he's like an unearthed gem on the small hall scene. He had a couple of Buckshe uh points wins and ones and stopping people he should have been stopping. And then like like you know, people don't stop me unless they're very good. And he stopped me and he got people talking and then he just went on an absolute rampage after that, stopping people in the first round. So I got to the third round with him, so I'm happy with that. But um <laughs> Yeah. Um but there's there's a new lad actually. I've got to put another lad in that in that uh in that um bracket. And his name's Andre Descazi, I think he's pronounced. He's a Romanian fella. I boxed him on the nineteenth of November this year, uh last year, sorry. Um and he's just he's just He's just he's just got it all, man. He's a good looking guy. He's tall. He's rangy. He's boxed. He's got good power. He's got good puts his punches together well. So he's going to be another one in the same bracket as Can Simpson, I think. And when you're sharing the ring with uh, some of these guys, and uh, and at times, um, obviously you're going to be carrying them. Have there ever been opponents, also without mentioning their names, because we don't want to embarrass them, that you thought I could stop you at any moment right now? You are garbage. Yeah, <laughs> more than you know about. More than you yeah. know about. A couple of times I've landed shots and seen their legs go. And mm. I've been under instruction of a promoter, uh, slash their corner, um, to, to to get the lad through the fight. Um, or like, like I said, going back to what I said before, I've not been in the best shape sometimes in the ring. Sometimes I've like, I shouldn't say this, but I've got in the ring with a hangover before. Like, and like, if I'm if you're not feeling great or feeling a bit, and and also when you're fighting every week, you sometimes you can get under the weather. So like you're you're literally going in the ring like with a cold, with the flu, and yeah. so there's there's times like that where I've been in the opposite corner under no instruction, but I haven't had the energy to be able to go through the gears and take these kids out. So just play the safe route, stay safe, stay at harm's way because they're the fights you come out of there with no marks in your face and. And like if you're literally just coasting in second gear, so they're the easy ones. But yeah, more more than you know about where you you think I've got this kid's number easily, but just, just don't bother. <laughs> now, obviously, it's like a bit being like a journeyman. Um, your job is to go in there, help them out if you like, and mm-hmm. show them the rope, kind of um, show their corner, their team, really what what they're about, all that kind of thing. And um, I'm sure that's so you give feedback to um, like a lot of the opponents, but. The idea is to not get stopped so you can fight next week or a couple of weeks' time, which you would think all boxers wouldn't know about. So why yeah. try to stop you? But some of them do try and stop you. Um. Yeah. Well. Um. It's it's, it's no it's, it makes no bearing on their life if they stop me, and I don't work the week after. So some of these some of these guys they're like um. They're. They they try and make a statement. They think if I can get Pucci out of there, then mm. that's that's a big statement win for me. And some of them try it, some of them don't. But um, I think like the, in being like what I've done, I, I've been around the block a few times. Uh, I think there is a certain level of respect there that some of these guys have, and especially when they're starting out in their career, a lot of them think uh, I just need to get the rounds in here. Pucci is a tough guy. You could take a shot. What and there's some of them might be apprehensive about the gas tank, so that some of them just like, are quite happy to just get behind the jab and and box. Cause that's that's they're, they're I'm short, and if you're taller than me and you can keep me on the end of your jab, then you're gonna win the fight. You know, if I can't get anywhere near you to clip to clip you, I mean I might do eventually, but um, 
but that that's how, that's how to beat me. If you're bigger and stronger than me, then keep me on the end of the jab. Um, and a lot of people did do that, but there was you get the, there was also the exceptions to the rules sometimes. But I think that if they're in their head, they're like he's already been stopped by top level opposition, and they might believe that they're not on that 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 level, so they can can just get the rounds in, stay safe, and and I can crack a little bit. So if I do crack you with a good shot, then that does put people on the back foot and make them realise that they are in a fight, regardless of my record. Well, speaking of which, I mean, um, you stopped somebody called David. I won't say his last name in case it's going to be but you did actually stop somebody not long ago. I stopped uh, who recently? The two? Yeah. Yeah, I've got I'll actually knocked some kitty out. He was asleep on his feet. The ref <laughs> jumped in. Um, that was back in September. And then I stopped another lad. He, he actually quit on his stool. Um, he claimed a broken hand, uh, but... I, I, I'm, I'm not sure he did uh, break his hand, but that's, I can only speculate. Um, but uh, yeah, I stopped two, and then I got I got a, a win on points against uh, another lad, and real, real, real sound guy. Um, I'll tell you what this guy's name. His name's Bradley Cousins, and uh, honestly, one of the nicest po- people I've ever met in boxing, outside of boxing. And um, his attitude was amazing. He he knew that he was getting into a big, a, a good fight. He knew that I was coming in shape, and he knew that I was uh, um, on a bit of a roll and form. And his exact words to me were after the fight was like, "Honestly, mate, thank you so much. I'll learn from that." And um, it's just a shame I've caught you on the wrong end of your career because <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I, t- I come into this final year of my boxing career thinking I'm going to show people what I can do. It. I played the game for long enough. I think I deserve something out of this. So I thought I'm going to start putting it on some people. And people learn more out of that. Like Brad, Brad will learn so much more out of that that fight. How to control? Because I, I basically just drowned him with pressure, and he felt it was only a four rounder. And he said again, his words after was like, "It felt like he'd done four rounds after the first round because of the pressure I had on him." And so it's all about um, that. That comes with experience. He now knows how he he can try and tie people up and use his uh, energy more efficiently. So yeah, and then I got a. Uh, I got a draw in the sixth rounder up in Essex, um, which I thought I, I, I won that fight. I won at least four of those rounds as a draw, but it is what it is. Um, and then I got probably the worst decision I've ever been involved with um, over in the York Hall. The kid didn't land a glove on me and I lost the fight by two points. I played with him, did she just move my head, pop, pop, sh- shooting little uppercuts. I thought I've coached to a four, four round win here. I thought I'd won every round. They gave it. They gave it um thirty thirty nine thirty seven to him, which was uh, it was laughable. I actually had to laugh um, <laughs> when I left the arena. I was I got really pissed off with the one up in Essex because I thought I won that fight. I got really annoyed. I got myself all worked up. So I thought I'm not going to do that again. So I just had to take on the chin and laugh. Like, no hard feelings to the referee, by the way, who scored that fight. It is what it is. But um, yeah, and then uh. And then I didn't fight for about six weeks, really. So I had like a big uh, gap of not fighting for about six weeks because I've been winning a few and getting a few results. And then when I did finally get a fight, it was against that Andre de Cesi. So, <laughs> and he absolutely battered me. So I had to really use my ring generalship and uh, IQ to get through that fight. He's He's got big potential, that kid. It's like a hard game for you, though, isn't it? Because um, it's like... You want to keep on fighting regularly. So what you don't want to do is get stopped. Also, mm-hmm. what you don't want to do is necessarily beat them because you won't get invited back. Yeah. It's a hard juggling game. It must be. Yeah, it can, it can be. But like, like I said, like um, part of the reasons I've lived a normal like, 20s life, uh, normal life through my 20s and into my 30s now is, um, is because... If I was on form and wanted to win every week, I might be more inclined to try and do that. Mm. Oh, awesome. Sometimes you haven't got the energy to be able to go through, so to go through those rounds and through those gears. So, um, so yeah. Would you miss it? I'll I will miss boxing. I'll miss I'll miss the atmosphere. I'll miss the um 
it will be an emotional night for me on the 25th of March, saying goodbye to boxing because I give my best years of my life to this sport. And I, I've loved doing it. I have, I'll be lying if I said I loved every minute, but um, I've, for the most part, I've loved absolutely loved it. Um, so I'll, I'll miss the fights. I'll miss being able to get in there and say it was me in there. I'll miss being able to say oh, I'm a professional boxer because um, I'm to me I was a pro boxer once. After that, um, so I'll miss it, but I won't miss uh, uh, the, the cutting the weights. I won't miss having to go to the gym every night. I won't miss um, tra traveling up and down the country, sometimes at the drop of a hat, um, hungry and tired because I'm trying to cut weight and. Uh, so yeah, so, and I won't miss the injuries. I'm not gonna miss the cuts and bruises on my face. I'm not gonna miss all that, but I will miss boxing. But I'm still gonna be involved. Yeah, yeah. So I've uh, I've, I've already started the process of becoming a referee. Oh, nice. Yeah, so uh, I'm gonna be a referee. Um, I'm gonna, I'm actually going up on Friday to do the second part of the assessment. Uh, for that. Um. So yeah, that's the easy transition through. So I'll still be involved with boxing, and uh, I love, like I said, I love boxing, and uh, being a referee, you got the best seat in the house. <laughs> yeah. So like, when I'm learning to be a referee, I'll be sitting ringside at some big events and watching boxing and seeing people, seeing my friends fight and and all that, and then um, and seeing friends I've got on the boxing circuit around the venues and stuff. So, and then eventually I'll be the man in the middle at some of the biggest fights in the world. So that's the, that's the end goal with that. And I love boxing as I get a ringside seat to these events. That's fantastic, that is. You ever got to the coaching? No. No, no. Uh, coaching, I've, I've got a lot to offer in the coaching sector. Um, Like, I could give, uh, I'd give, um, I'd give a lot of advice to people and some like tricks of the trade, which I'm happy to do. But in terms of being like a an out and out coach, a licensed coach, it's, it's never interested me. Like I'm not, I've never been that good at holding the pads. I mean, I know what I'm doing, but like I just get, I just find that a bit tedious holding the pads. Um, uh, and you have to give up more time. I give up a lot of my time for boxing anyway. Um, throughout the week, training and the weekends and stuff. And so if I'm doing that as a coach, I have to give up more time because it's not just me. I'm doing it for somebody else and I could have a stable of fighters who need coaching. So it's never interesting me yet. I mean, sometimes you can look at a journeyman and think, you shouldn't really be a journeyman. You've got a lot, like a lot more. Like mm -hmm. um, for me, like a Robbie Chapman, for example. Yeah. His record could and should be much better than what it is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you got a few at the moment. You got a... Uh... Carl Sampson, Jordan Granham, um, Robbie, like you said, all all very sound boxers, good in the amateurs, and probably might have had a half decent pro career if everything had gone their way. Um, but the reality is, like, I suppose I could, I could put myself in the same bracket. If everything could have gone my way, I might have fought for a British title, maybe, maybe. Who knows? Again, no, only speculation. But um, uh, they fall into the bracket of like the. The hassle of selling tickets becomes a bit bit of a burden. Like example, I, I boxed Robbie when he was a prospect. I boxed him in his like second or third fight, mm. and um, uh, he, he we was on first because he's only sold about twenty tickets. He had to pay me out of his own pocket to come and do the fight. So like, um, yeah. So uh, there's a the people just realize that there's it's not what it's not as easy as, as it looks you got to sell the tickets and you end up just falling into the the, the not the trap you fall into the, the routine of being an away fighter and then it becomes a way of life and it's I, i've loved it <laughs> i've loved it, this side of the sport it's much more laid back and it's great but to be fair that's like a manager's dream isn't it? a boxing manager's dream they would love a bunch of journeymen because obviously you're fighting regularly and that means he's getting a cut yeah yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, and like, um, I'm not sure what a lot of journal. I can only speak for myself here, but Rich has had um a, a really crusty job with me. Um, I'm not high maintenance. Um, he wraps my hands probably once every ten fights or something like that. So I just use the same wraps and put them on. So he's good at hand wrapping, so I just cut them off, 
preserve mm. them and make them look uh, decent uh, for the next fight. So he doesn't. So he doesn't go a fork out for bandages every week for me. Um, uh, he lives in Swindon. I live in Bristol, so I, he doesn't train me. He just works out of a gym and trains his fighters up there. Um, yeah, and I'll, I'll just I'll, even on the night, like I'll do all I need him to do is give me water and advice in the corner. That's it. That's, so he's got the easiest job in the world. Like, but um, some other journeyman might take it a little bit more seriously on their hands every week. But for the most part, you see most journeymen just doing what I just uh, described. To be fair, your man, um, from time to time, he'll dress up with you, won't he? The ring walk. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, he, he does enjoy it, to be fair. But Rich, Rich loves the bloody camera. He loves the camera more than me, so. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. So your farewell, your swan song, is March the 25th in your home of Bristol. Yeah, mate. Yeah, I'm not from Bristol. I'm from the Forest of Dean, but I've been living in Bristol for the last six, seven years. Um, I'm, I'm quite friendly with the promotional company is putting this on so I had a little word with them they kindly offered me a spot on the show um, oh it's a headline so it's, in... it's, like a, it's like a your show like a headline no it was, um, I'm on the undercard of Aaron Sutton for this Southern Area title defence and then there's uh, Powell August um, he's like WBC international champion but mm. he's Polish Polish but he's Bristol based um, yeah so uh yeah, they've given me a slot on the show. I'm guessing I've done I'm doing quite well with the tickets already, so I'm guessing I might have a bit of a later spot on the show, depending on how the other lads do. But uh but yeah, it's a nice, nice little swan song in the place that I'm living now. It's not too far from the Forest of Dean, so um a lot of people come up on the coach from the Forest of Dean to, to visit. Uh, to visit, to, to to witness the fight. And uh yeah, it'd be a good be a good little uh be a good little way to say goodbye to boxing uh, with all my friends there. I saw my, my debut, I saw 120 tickets, then didn't really sell many tickets, slash any tickets for the other 160, not 168 fights. So to have uh, the way to finish the way it started on the home corner with all my friends and family there, it's going to be it's gonna be special. Like I say, it will be emotional. It'd be hard to say goodbye, but I'm looking forward to it. Does the result matter or is it just, just having fun? No, no, so um, yeah, it's, it's, I'm fighting another journeyman, but there is journeyman's code. Uh, Ryan's got fights probably booked in the weekend after, so like, I'm not gonna try and take liberties on him. But I said to him, I was like, I haven't got anything booked after. I'm retiring. So if you want to come and try and make a good fight of it, and try and t- try and take me out of that, you carry on, because um, it's my last fight. I've sold a lot of tickets, and uh, we got to make it a. Nice little barn burner. I might like try and make it a good old small hall classic. <laughs> yeah, why not? Um, any ideas for your ring walk? Yeah, I've already booked it. But, uh, planning it now. I'm just getting the song mashed together. Sweet. Well, if anybody wants to take this, I'll put a link to it in the description of this uh, video. Yeah. Uh, uh, up along and uh, watch you. Is anybody um, recording your fight? I'm not sure, you know. Um, you live? I don't think there's... I don't think the standing. I've got, I've got um, a friend of mine is a videographer, like there's weddings and events and stuff. So he's recording the the evening. So there'll be some fight footage of it, but um, uh, in the way of like recording and streaming, I don't think so. The standing guys generally don't. But me, I'll, I'll, I'll try and set it up. Maybe see if uh, I've got um, a few media outlets like yourself uh, interested in coming down. So maybe. They might bring their uh, streaming services down and try and stream it live. Who knows? Fantastic. All right, my man. You want to finish up on anything? Like sponsors? I uh, know. Or... If you want, if you want tickets, just go, come to me directly. Uh, slide to my DMs. Uh, my 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 my, uh, my numbers on the fight poster. So give us a text if you need, and uh, we'll sort out and get some tickets for you all. Fantastic. I appreciate your time, my man. Thank you very much. Cheers, mate.